Okay, uh, welcome guys to the last tutorial, hopefully, regarding uh, developing our point of sale system. Uh, in the last set of tutorials, we were able to um, uh, finish almost the whole system. Um, we can define items uh, for seats, uh, display number of reports, and also setting how the report should look like, uh, the receipt should look like okay and uh, we can make it customizable anyway um, the only thing remaining is backup and restore and these are very important reason for that uh, your customer is not going to be a, a technical person they won't be able to know how um, to uh, uh, copy a file let's say simply copy the database file and find that inside the program files okay this is the first thing uh, in case you are using uh, a database instance not uh, uh, that is not uh, uh, in case you're using a database server not uh, not a file based database like we are doing here uh, it will not be easy to take backup anyway so in our case uh, we will work on uh, creating backup now uh, the way we are going to create a backup, we are going to create a binary file and we are going to store the uh, information for each table. Okay, so in our case, uh, how many tables do we have? Uh, wait a minute here. Okay, so we can see that we have here one, two, three, four. We have uh, four tables. Okay, so the way you could do it, you can think about this like uh, you are going to create a subroutine that will save the whole four tables now your question is how do you save uh, a single table okay so you will create uh, a subroutine that will do that and a table consists of a number of rows so you're gonna create a subroutine that will store all these rows okay and uh, finally you're gonna create a, a subroutine that will uh, store the value of a single um, column in a table Okay, now in order to, cl uh, to clarify this, let me get into work and show you what do I mean by that. Okay, so for this, um, I'm going to create a separate module. Uh, I don't want this to get mixed with the others. So um, I'm going to right click, uh, where's that? Right click on this project and select add here and I'm going to select a module. Okay, wait a few seconds, my system is slow. Okay, so here, uh, backup, restore, module, make the B capital, restore, capital, and M module, and hit enter. Okay, so this is going to be public module so that you can access that from anywhere. Now, we're going to make... Uh, <coughs> Uh, make our code he uh, here uh, uh, we're gonna work on the code that will save a table okay so here this function will save a table into disk okay public function save table to disk okay so now um, your problem is um, what kind of information do you need to know in order to save a table to, to the disk? Well, actually you are going to need a connection as um, this should be what? Uh, this is access, right? Okay, so OADB, OADB connection, there we go. This, this is the first thing here. And uh, we're going to need tr trans as OADB dot OADB db transaction okay so we have a little bit of t okay great and next what do we need we are going to need the table name table name as string okay and finally uh, what we are going to need is uh, an object that will represent the binary file so f as uh, file, uh, uh, file, uh, sorry, system IO, um, stream writer. There we go. So, stream writer. 
we are going to use that in order to solve our problem. Okay, so this will help us write the information. Okay, and this function will return boolean. So if there's any kind of error, it's going to return false, and we are going to um, show that to the end user. Okay, so here, try. Now, first thing we want to do, I'm going to assume that the connection of Zelfin and the transaction is uh, available as well. So, uh, we have two steps. Uh, first, we need to know how many rows are there in the table. And uh, we also need to know how many columns are there in the table. So, here we go. Wait a minute. Okay. So, um, dimension cmd as new oladb oladb command. Uh, okay, so here and dimension sql as string equals equals what? Select count of star from what? Here we're gonna need the table name. Table name, there we go. <clears throat> There we go. So next, I'm gonna say cmd dot uh, command text equals what? Um, uh, the command text is gonna be SQL cmd dot connection equal con and cmd dot transaction equal trans. There we go. So we prepare these and now dimension row count uh, as long equals zero. Oops, as long. That like this uh, just in case uh, equals cmd dot execute scatter okay so execute scatter is going to execute the sql uh, and it's going to return the first row the result set um, it's going to return the first uh, uh, the first value now if row count uh, is nothing then row count equals zero okay so um, we need to cmd dot um, wait a minute dispose okay so we just destroyed that let me add some comments here get the number of rows there we go and here we finish the first one okay uh, next we are gonna need to know the number of uh, columns and also uh, we, we are going to start working on that. So, um, uh, get all the values. Okay, so SQL equals select star from and table name. Okay, and what this is going to do is going to uh, get me all the rows in the database. Okay, simple as that. Uh, all the rows for that specific table. Okay. And uh, here I'm going to say cmd equals new oladb dot oladb command cmd dot uh, command text equals what is going to be sql cmd dot com equals uh, this is a connection cmd dot transaction equal trans. There we go. So we got this information and then dimension r equal uh, cmd dot execute reader and the readers can allow me to loop on the values uh, row by row and work on them okay so um, let me see r dot uh, field count so r dot field count is the number of columns this is this is what we need okay so dimension column count um, as long equals r dot field count. There we go. So uh, we finished that. Now we are gonna store the information by the number of columns in the DB. There we go. And uh, next, what are we gonna do? Is uh, what did we write here? What's the name of the variable from the file? It's f. I'm gonna say fs. Okay, and now I'm going to say fs dot write. Um, yeah, we have two methods. We could use write, uh, and we could use write line. I 
guess we could uh, use the right line and assume that every value will be represented by a, si a single line okay so uh, this will make it easy for us we will be able to read the content of the file and debug it quickly but usually you want your backup to store the information in binary format regardless uh, let's make it the easy way um, so here the number of columns in the DB this is gonna be column count uh, this is gonna be in the table there we go um, before that as dot right line the name of the table table name okay that's great so we wrote the number of uh, sorry the name of the table right the info we wrote the name of the table the number of columns at as dot right line row count okay next we are gonna write the each row in the database now for dimension i as integer and for i equals zero to um um to row count minus one and now we are gonna call the, this function that we haven't created yet which is uh, which is what uh, write write uh, row into wait a minute first I should say r dot read okay and then write raw info to file oops sorry to file there we go and I am gonna pass r here okay and I'm gonna put an if statement if not then I'm gonna say f dot close does not close return false there we go otherwise if everything's okay I'm gonna say return true okay if any kind of error happens I'm gonna say fs dot close and return false okay so now we need to create this other function which is write row from photo file okay this is gonna be easy write the um, the information of row, of row into file so public uh, function um this one uh, r as uh, what was data type for this one okay sorry where's that where's execute reader okay so it all db data reader okay so r is uh, OLADB, OLADB data reader. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna say try dimension i as integer for i equals zero to r dot uh, field count minus one. Okay, uh, next I'm gonna say dimension v equal r dot field or let's say item of i and I'm gonna uh, add double quotation to that the reason is that it, this will if we have no value this will convert the value into a string and we avoid errors okay this can be what a string there we go and now we have these okay just a second we just write the value uh, I need to say fs as stream writer there we go oops system io dot come on dot io dot stream writer okay so next what do we have to do fs dot write line v as simple as that okay any kind of error uh, okay after that we'll turn it true here what do we do uh, we just say fs dot close and uh, or actually i'm gonna just return false yep um for this one i need to wait here i need to pass the false there we go okay so this one will save a row this will save the whole table and next we need the subroutine that will save the whole database which are the four tables okay so here this is how we are going to do it now the order here is important because we are going to need the order when restoring okay you want to save the master tables first and then save the detailed tables later 
okay so here uh, save all DB okay so public function save DB and here uh, what are we gonna do we are gonna just pass the file name a uh, string there we go and this is gonna be as boolean and here we have try dimension fs as new system io file uh, wait a minute as io file equals system io file dot create okay what do we have we have the file name uh oops what do we have we need the um yeah uh there should be what while well, i'll stream oops buffer size no system io st stream writer I need to do what? Implement stream writer, right? Ah, uh, gosh, I'm forgetting things here. Uh, um, gosh, how did I do that the last time? Oops, this is stream writer equal system io equals. what was it and this is my problem I forgot a lot I usually do things once and uh, forget about them so stream writer this is file dot open read uh, open specified file stream open write okay and here we what we have we have file name mm -hmm. file out stream there we go and this one cannot be casted to stream writer cannot be converted to stream writer mm. equals system io Text writer writing character stream particular encoding. Wait a minute. Yeah. Stream. <laughs> What's that? Okay, open text. What's that? Stream reader, upper read, upper write, uh, open zip up for writing, upper write. Uh, yeah, I think I need to just say open write. Let me work with that file name. Okay, and uh, this one's going to be what? Uh, file stream. Can it be file stream? Okay, so uh, let me check something here. If this one is file stream, I need to change this one to file stream. Sorry about that. And hmm, what do we have here? We have write. Yeah, uh, this is gonna make our work a little bit harder. So let me put this with the way it was. Yeah. So instead of this, <laughs> file stream. Now, how do I cast that or convert it? Uh, dimension stw as a new stream system dot io dot stream writer and here okay I think this is what I needed to do yeah 
I should have done it this way. I was wondering because I did that before and I forgot how to do it. Okay, so this is how it should be done. Sorry guys, get confused a lot. Anyway, so um, this one's for create the stream writer object. This is the first part. Next, we need to store the tables. So, all we need to do we have the first I'm gonna work on the values table okay so save the tables okay so if uh, wait before that I need to open DB connection connection and start a transaction there we go so dimension um, con as new all IDB Ole DB, wait a minute. Ole DB connection. There we go. And here, um, okay, dimension um, TMP as a new POS table adapter dot. Let me select any one of these. And here, con uh, dot connection string equal TMP dot connection the connection string okay so i i got that and uh, next um, connection dot open now we just open the connection and dimension trans as new all adb dot all adb all adb transaction and uh, oops it's a transaction and the trans equal connection dot begin transaction okay so we we are ready now to work save the tables we have the connection tra and transaction so first table is values i'm gonna say this okay so if not wait a minute save table to disk and I'm gonna pass the connection. I'm gonna pass the pass the transaction. The table name is values. There we go. And I'm gonna pass fs. Then, um, well, you know what? I'm not gonna close the file here. There we go. Okay. So in that case, I'm gonna do what? Fs dot close and return false there we go so this if statement will make sure that we we, uh, we worked on on the table and saved it correctly also we have the con dot close there we go done let's work on the second table we have the items table control c control v is gonna be the items items there we go and we have what we have receipts let me make sure um, I'm writing the spelling I'm copying the spelling here yeah I wrote this spelling wrong sorry about that but anyway it's already done I cannot see I P T right R E C I P T S okay so sorry about the misspelling and receipt details this is going to be the last one control c control v do what here rec rec ipt details there we go so this is our receipt details after saving all these values all we need to do is what we're going to say fs.close we're gonna close this one connection dot close and uh, return a true if anything goes wrong just return false done so this is the backup part <clears throat> it's very straightforward uh, okay so we have this subroutine that will write a single row we are gonna uh, use this subroutine that will write the table is going to make use of this one because each table consists of a number of rows and there we, we use that one okay so uh, let's work on the save db let's go to our interface come on 
Okay, that was very slow. Okay, my system is very slow here. Okay, so here I'm gonna say maintenance. Okay, backup. Backup DB. Come on. Okay, so here save backup. So dimension as if D as a new save file dialog as if D dot uh, filter equals star dot oops dot backup pipe star dot backup. Well, I'm gonna assume the extensions backup. If as if D dot show dialog to cancel then exit sub. If not, um, I'm gonna say what. Uh, if not, or if, um, what was the name? Uh, backup restore module. If backup, backup restore module dot, what's the name? Save db, and the file name, sfd dot file name. Okay, then, msg box, uh, backup completed successfully. There we go. Um, okay, only for information and uh, okay, um, else I'm gonna say MSG box, uh, unable to make backup. Um, okay, only uh, sorry, or critical. Error. There we go. So we made these two small lines. Done. So let's save that. And now I'm gonna run this. One, two, three, go. Um, items. I'm gonna add the item. One, T, okay, 10, 12. I'm having this single item. I'm gonna fill this receipt. Okay, no problem, but we have the receipt uh, being stored. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna go, go to maintenance and back up the database. I'm gonna say T test. Okay, and save that. Unable to make backup. Okay, I wonder what, what was that about. So, mm -hmm. let me select this. Let's go back here. Maintenance, make backup. Yeah. Save over right here. Let's trace that F11. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have the connection here. We're gonna open it, begin a transaction. So let's go to save the values table. Okay, uh, on a command, select constar from table name. There we go. Um, this is SQL, the connection transaction, execute. Okay, so this is uh, syntax earned from. Um, yeah, it is values, right? Okay, um, V A L U E S. Okay, I think I know what the issue is. Um, uh, wait, oops. Okay, uh, the problem is I selected a name for this table that is not. Uh, how should I say? Um, that is a keyword, and because of that, I will need to. And include few brackets in my SQL statement. Okay, so that's why you must not use keywords as names for uh, your tables. Okay, F11. Okay, so we're gonna put a bracket, oh, oops, square bracket here and square bracket here. Done. This is the first one. And square bracket here and square bracket here. Done. So, let's go, okay, and still, specified cast is not valid, okay, mm. let me, uh, let's wait a minute, let me go to the data set, where is that, this is the values, and I'm gonna go here and select properties, yeah, oh, the V should be capital, right, the V should be capital, <laughs> okay, the V, letter V here should be capital. Okay. Um, 
Let me go back here. F11. This podcast is not valid. Ah, oh, that's a problem. B A L U E S values. And the great. Um, my selection for table name is causing this error, so I am regretting it now. Um, anyway. Okay, values, set account, star from ALUES. Okay, so let me see. Um, I think it should be a little bit different. Let me see. Um, mm -hmm. These are the values table. Let's go here. Set a key value from square bracket values. Let's go and see here. Yeah. So it's identical. It looks identical. I wonder. Anyway. So let's go. Let me try another thing here. Let's go back. Where is execute scalar? I'm gonna say just trying to make sure this is not the error. Oh, uh, gosh, I know what the error is. I'm sorry, misinterpreted that. Gosh. So, do 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 just remove it. Okay, no problem. Um, I misunderstood that. I misunderstood or misinterpreted the error. Okay, never mind. Let's go. Say yes. F11. This one. Go, go, go. Okay, so this one works fine. So. Uh, this is the five rows. Okay, these are the five rows. So, execute reader. We are going to write the table name. We are going to write number of columns two. The row count is five. Okay, we are going to read the first one and write it to the database, second, and so on. As you can see, okay, I forgot something here. We need to say what uh, cmd dot dispose. This must be done. Uh, r dot close. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you will have leaks in your memory. So return true. So the first one saved. Second one, hopefully, will be saved correctly as well. We have a single item here. Yep. And this one and this one and uh, it's done so the backup operation completed successfully let's repeat that just so that uh, you can see the backup is working test yeah there we go so let's go to the desktop this is the backup f2.txt this is a text file so if we open that you can see this is the values table it has uh, two columns, five rows. The first column is password, uh, sorry, first row password one, two, three, second row printer, empty string, unit width 20, unit height 14, and so on. So you can see all the values are available, available here. No problem. Now we are gonna work on the restore part. Now the restore is the reverse. Okay, so what we are gonna need, we are gonna need a function that will um, read a specific number of values and return it uh, as an array okay so read uh, a number of rows 
from file. Okay, so the mission. Uh, wait a minute. Public. Um, let me stop this recording and start again uh, to get rid of uh, audio synchronization. Okay, so now let's continue. So this function is gonna read the number of values and return, um, um, let's say, a list of strings. So public function read a list of rows. Okay, and here what what I'm gonna specify fs uh, as a um, stream reader here. This is gonna be st st uh, system io stream reader is the reverse of stream writer used to read information and here um see uh, column count as integer and this is gonna return as list of string even though we have numbers we're going to treat them as string okay so try so dimension as integer um dimension uh CV as a new list of strings. These are the list of um, column values. So for i equals 0, 2, column count minus 1, CV dot add fs dot read line. There we go. So as simple as that. Um, and uh, yeah, return CV. If we have any kind of error, return, uh, return nothing. Okay, and this will tell us that there was some kind of error while reading the information. Next, we need to work on the uh, function that will uh, read the information of a single row and insert it into uh, into a table. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, read the information of, of the whole table. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so read uh, the information or let's say load a table from backup so public function load table from uh, load table um, from backup um, what do we have we have con as a new uh, oops as oladb oladb connection and trans as is going to be all adb all adb transaction and uh, fs as file uh, oops tree and system dot io stream reader and finally what do we need we need the uh, table name a string there we go as boolean try so what do we need to do here uh, obviously what we did we saved what <clears throat> let's have a look here so we saved the table name column count row count so we need to read the information um, dimension tn or string equal fs dot read line uh, t name t name dimension t count as uh, long equal fs dot read line uh, dimension r count for row count as long equal fs dot read line there we go so again let's have a look we have table name column count row count so you have these and now uh, we are going to create a loop dimension i as integer for i equals zero to what to uh, our count minus one um, basically let's say here load basic information okay next we need to make sure that we're loading information of the same table so if table name doesn't equal t name then um, return false okay that's obvious um, what are we gonna do also let's have a look here So, uh, we are gonna load the information, dimension uh, um, values equal load, uh, oops, uh, 
Wait a minute. Read list of of, of rows. Read list of rows. Okay, I'm gonna pass fs and here c. Uh, d count. Okay. Um, I think the name here is not uh, very well describing what's happening. So rename read read full raw information from disk that's much better and instead of t count rename this is gonna be column count column column count there we go this is much better so we got the values now we're gonna check for errors so if values is nothing then return false it means some kind of error happened okay if not what this means we are now ready uh, to insert the values so we are going to create the sql statement at runtime why because uh, we uh, how, sh how should i say that we don't know how many columns uh, uh, or this function will be called for multiple tables and each table have its uh, have a different number of columns okay so here uh, we are gonna say dimension insert sql a string this is gonna be insert into um, into our table and table name and close the bracket values and i'm gonna open this close the double quotation and next we are gonna do what we are gonna um use some kind of for loop so dimension oops this is i here for i equals zero to what column count minus one so here insert sql equal insert sql and what and i uh, oh wait a minute and colon and i okay so um so since this one equals the number of columns so first going to add colon zero colon one and so on we need now to add commas after that so if i equals or doesn't equal um co uh, column count minus one then um insert sql equal insert sql and comma there we go and finally insert sql equals insert sql and close the bracket there we go so this creates our insert statement next uh Dimension cmd as new oladb dot oladb command and uh, cmd dot command text equals insert sql cmd dot uh, wait a minute um, connection equal con cmd dot transaction equal trans. One last thing we need to put all the values here in the con into the command so dimension j as integer for j equals zero two values dot count minus one and here we're gonna say cmd dot parameters dot add with value add with value this is gonna be colon and j and I'm gonna say here values of j okay so um here this is going to add all the values and finally cmd dot execute non query there we go and uh, one final thing cmd dot dispose okay so that we don't have any kind of memory leak after this finishes i'm going to say return true otherwise i'm going to say return false okay seems well i guess um let me check a few things here yeah so this function is gonna do what? This function is gonna load a complete table uh, into the database from the backup. We are gonna need one last function uh, and it is gonna be very similar to this one. 
in, but instead of save all information to the database, it's going to be a load all the information from database. So here, this is going to be what? Load all DB. Load all DB. Um, here, let me see. This is going to be what? Stream. Stream reader. There we go. And yeah. Connection and transaction. So we have the connection here and the transaction here as well. And uh, load table. Okay. Load table from backup. Okay. Um, what do we have here? Uh, I'm going to need what? Uh, let me see. So the connection name, oops, these parameters should be in reverse. Okay, so this is the values table. Now, okay, if this executes successfully, it's gonna continue, if not, okay. There's another trick that need to be done. I'm gonna show you in a minute what that is. Let me see, load load table from backup or maybe from disk yeah that is comma dun dun okay load table from backup copy that paste this one here this is gonna be system. okay so this actually will not work okay this will never work and the reason for that is we are loading the information adding that to the previous data if, if for example you do some kind of error and you are restoring it will combine the old values with the new ones so you want to clear your database from these old values okay so here we need to add a few statements okay so here here clear all tables how do we do that we're going to write an SQL statement so dimension cmd as the new alladb dot alladb command okay and this is going to be what um, cmd dot command text equals what um, so last one that will be loaded is this one so basically the delete order works in reverse of the restore order so we're gonna delete what's in receipt details delete from this this guy cmd dot connection uh, connection equal con cmd dot transaction equal trans there we go and finally uh, we have cmd dot execute and a query so this is the first guy Mm -hmm. Control C, Control V. Again, we can say CMD dot uh, dispose. XMD equals new. Uh, alladb dot alladb command. Okay. So um, yeah, CMD dot dispose. The second table is receipts. There we go. V. Okay, and um, we have the items and values. Control C uh, and Control V. There we go. Receipts. Uh, what do we have? We have uh, items and values. So this part pretty much clears all tables. Okay, and then this part is gonna load them. But still, we have a few issues here. Um, if any error happens, the thing you need to do is, before closing the connection, is to roll back. So what are we going to do next is say trans.rollback. Okay, and then we're going to close the connection. Same goes here, trans.rollback. And here we're going to say trans.rollback. 
Okay, and here we're gonna say trans dot rollback. Oops, rollback. Okay. However, if everything goes well, what we say, what we are gonna say is trans dot commit, and this will save all the information. So if we have any kind of error during database backup or restore, sorry, uh, during database restore, the previous information will be kept safe. Okay. Um, what we need to do next, we need to move the transaction, oops, the connection object, which is here, outside, and the transaction object should be also here. There we go. And if any kind of error happens here, we are gonna say transaction dot rollback uh, con dot close. There we go. So. Um, in case that one of these statements ha had some kind of error, um, it won't. Uh, we're gonna roll back that. Okay. So this is pretty much um, the restore operation. Um, next, we are gonna need to. We are gonna need to uh, add that. Go to the main window here. I'm gonna say restore db. Okay, double click that. So, dimension OFD as new open file dialog of D dot filter equals star dot backup. Oops, backup pipe star dot backup. Okay, if OFD dot show dialog to cancel, then exit sub. And next, uh, if not load db. Um, OFD dot file file name. Then uh, what are we gonna do? We are gonna msg um, box error restoring the db error restoring database the database um, critical or okay only and error. Otherwise else msg box restore successful and this is gonna be information okay um, or okay only and okay and finally we are gonna end the program because we need to load the information and I am too lazy to do the refreshing here so I would ask the user to run the program again okay so let's save that and uh, for restoring, I'm gonna do a trace first just to make sure it's gonna work. So let's run this one. Okay, one, two, three, enter. Um, let me go to the desktop, let me remove the .txt here. Yep, and um, let's go. Okay, so you can see here that the information is removed because we have the, the, the code. So I go to maintenance and I say restore db, and this is our backup open so now i can trace into that f11 okay so we just open the file and next well, what do we have we open the connection and that that transaction now delete from receipts so far so good Delete uh, receipt details delete the receipt information delete the items all of these are are already empty but if you have anything else okay so we have error here syntax error from close I think uh, yeah let's see items ITMS delete from items okay so I have some kind of error here what's the transaction rollback okay so this was a good safety feature let's let's try this again First one executed successfully, second, okay, so items, okay, next one, open a bracket, the V should be capital, close that, okay, so there we go, no problem, okay, so now we are going to load the first table, which is the va uh, table values F11, so here we are going to check the names, oops, the values against what? T name. Hmm. Uh, it seems that I'm sending what? Table name. Um, 
it seems that for some reason I wrote the file name in, inside the database, uh, inside the backup. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's why I'm getting this error. Uh, that's weird. So return, return. So we have error here. So all the changes are rolled back. The connection is closed. Everything is safe. So uh, we didn't uh, lose the information actually. Okay. So let me check the the um, backup code. How did I save a table? Let me see. <clears throat> table name. That okay. Save. Let me try this out. F two dot txt. So we have values here. Okay. I'll have to check this again. Sorry. Um, let me try this again. I wonder what am I doing wrong. Maintenance, restore database. Let's go back here. Yeah. Load the database. All seems well. Ouch. Oh, I, I did a... Sorry. What's wrong with me? Okay. F11. Put a breakpoint here run the code there we go f element there we go so we have table name is nothing column count and this one okay so what do we have as parameters we have table name here values this is correct and we have the file system here which is a string reader so i'm going to read a complete line t name and for some reason the t name is what it's returning to me the full path how come? That is very strange. Wait, uh, oh, okay, I see. Gosh, uh, this should be stream reader, not string reader. Stream reader. Such a mistake, gosh. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah so let's run this again oops load table from backup and this should be stream reader gosh and load for row I didn't check the spelling and that's why I'm getting into trouble. Stream reader. Read for row. Where is that? Read for row from disk. And this should be what? Stream reader. Okay, stream reader. So just make sure that this is stream reader, not string reader. Okay, that's why. Okay, that was weird. One, two, three. Enter. Maintenance restore database and there we go. So we're gonna load the first one. This is a table name, so we're we are getting the values right here. The columns two, the count is five. So everything is well. We are now creating the square statement, so insert into values, values, and here we are going to generate uh, column zero and this column one. And we have now the full SQL statement. Okay, now we are gonna um, get the values from database. You can see now these are two uh, two values: the password one two three, and um, this, this is the command text transaction stuff like that. And now these are the values. This is gonna be column zero. Next is column one, and we're gonna execute that. Same thing goes here and uh, yeah 
this is the third row, this is the fourth row, and so on. It's continuing. We loaded the first table. This is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth. And now we're gonna close the file system, we're gonna commit the changes, close the connection, return true, and if we if we run this now, okay, restore successful, it ended. Now I'm gonna run this again and you're gonna see one, two, three, the item that we stored, uh, sorry, the item we, we created when we took the first backup, okay? So this is pretty much how the backup and restore works. Um, it's not very difficult. Uh, you just uh, split the hard work into smaller units. So this one's very, uh, sorry, where is that? So here, this part will load the complete database. We're gonna remove all the previous information and you create, uh, you create a function that will load a complete table and in that you, you are going to use a function that will load a complete row um yeah it's as simple as that uh, the reverse is done in, uh, in the backup operation so um this is a pretty much how the point of sale application uh, could be made um now let's uh discuss a few things here um uh, let me s stop recording for a second and continue it again Okay, so um, I guess uh, since we finished that, we are going to discuss a few things here. Um, yeah, so is there anything still there? We finished this one, this one, and uh, look at that. That's 100%. Uh, we finished all this uh, work. Anyway, so the thing I wanted to discuss with you guys is <coughs> the coding style here. And the coding style here is actually bad. <coughs> First, I would like to discuss a few things here. First, um, the way using data sets uh, that the wizard, cre the wizard creates for you, um, I did that in order to uh, uh, make you guys familiar with the, um, with, with the wizard. Okay, but in, uh, usually I don't use use it. Uh, I would like I would rather uh, have more control on the code than the wizard. The wizard does not give me much flexibility here. Um, this is the first thing. Also, if you look at the uh, module here, what you will see is that. Um, uh, here we are gonna pass a connection and a transaction and each time you we are going to create a command text and we are gonna assign a connection transaction to it to execute a single SQL statement and uh, although it's not difficult if you have lots of SQL statements in your code this will be a um, tiresome thing to do so in, in my the, the way I do it is I c create an object that will manage the communication with the database uh, and it, it will create the command for me whenever I need it will uh, generate the SQL statements I need and uh, it's not as easy uh, but um, it, it makes your work much easier uh, and I didn't do it because I didn't want you guys to get confused. Uh, so this is the first thing. Uh, second thing is that, um, again, uh, this work is not uh, being separated well. Uh, I mean, um, look, at, look at here, we have a, a module for backup and restore. And inside the, the main window, we have um, a subroutine for uh, for rendering the receipt that we did before, right? Uh, we did something like that. Uh, where is it? Um, if you check the previous, uh, if you check the previous tutorial, you, you would know what what I'm uh, talking about here. But uh, anyway, so uh, what I'm, I am trying to say, the other point is the separation of of uh, functionalities 
is not very well defined, you will find some SQL commands in the form. You will find some of the SQL commands in the uh, in the data set and other SQL commands in here. Usually, when I do a project, if I don't use point of cell, uh, sorry, if I don't use a data set, I will create a complete module just having the code uh, that deals with the database, and I will call that. Uh, this way the work is much more um, organized okay and uh, the last thing I want to tell you about is um, well if you are developing a point-of-sale system Microsoft provides a library um, it's it's called uh, 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 POS for .NET or something like that I never tried it, but what that library does, I think, it makes it easier for you to communicate with the hardware. Uh, if you remember when we spoke first about uh, the point of sale, when we wanted to design it, we said that we don't have a printer, we don't have, for example, barcode scanner and stuff like that. Well, uh, that library will allow your program to communicate with the hardware and tell you if there is a barcode scanner, uh, if there is uh, a thermal printer and stuff like that and it will uh, it will make your job easier okay so uh, our program does not take advantage of that library okay so this is a weak point uh, with our work um, regardless of that um, my goal with this project was to show you how to write a real, um, uh, a simple and real uh, uh, application that might be useful for you guys, and have an idea how to link the, um, the uh, how how to use the different techniques together in order to build an application. Um, I hope uh, you find this useful in a way. Um, I hope it gives it gives you a few ideas and increase your understanding of how to work with the databases. Um, yeah, uh, if you have questions, if you have suggestions, send them to me. And uh, I'm not sure what to do next for uh, for uh, the uh, as as video tutorials. Um, should I stop for a while? Uh, do you want me to create a start a set of tutorials for ASP.NET if I'm gonna use that I'm gonna work with the database again uh, but it will be a different uh, a little bit different from this one because we're gonna talk about uh, web or do you want me to create another system if you want so what kind of system do you want um, uh, if you don't want that what about uh, working on the game uh, I've been working for a while and I was hoping somebody would uh, uh, get interested in it and uh, maybe we could work together uh, on that but seems no one's very much interested in that um, I, I'm trying to finish it. Uh, it it takes a little bit of time because I have to work on the music myself I have to work on the surprise uh, on the level design I'm doing everything so it's taking uh, lots of time um, in addition, I don't have very much of a free time. This is the other issue. Um, hopefully, I will try to make this game work uh, via network, so you will have some kind of server, and others could communicate to the server, and you have multiplayer mode. Uh, and uh, maybe, hopefully, it will, it will be something like... Uh, Minecraft, uh, where you have multiple players communicating with the same server or something like that. Hopefully, this is just what I hope, but uh, it all depends on free time. Um, what other projects do I have in mind? Um, these are the main things that I have in mind for now. Again, um, I hope you'll find this useful. Um, thank you guys for watching and uh, wishing you a wonderful day. Okay? Bye-bye.